in the previous lectures we have seen how to initialize the avr microcontroller and how to initialize the ports of the microcontroller and we have seen a program to blink the led where the led is connected on port d.7 pd7 now let us practice few more examples about normal c in embedded systems by using the led program you can go to file open second example that is led underscore 2 you open the project can open that okay so in this example just uh, repeat the same program except that this time two changes one we are loading the 8 bit value 80 into data direction register and whenever we want to set the bit of the port entire port d we are writing the data that means entire port d 8 bits will be affected where except the d7 bit all other bits we are making zero then there is a delay program which we have included the delay function and we have called the delay function milliseconds ms only the difference is this time instead of specifying a constant in the bracket we have specified the name of the variable and that then then that va variable in the infinite loop of while we are decrementing whenever this routine is executed so initially the value is loaded with 100 as a delay then you will you will see that every time the blinking speed of the led changes because the delay is decremented so it is like a sweep signal or pwm signal where continuously we are changing the on time and off time of the led which will be useful maybe in some other applications like current control devices okay so these are the major two changes one is entire port d we are writing 8 bit data that means all 8 bits will be affected and second is instead of passing the constant delay we are passing a variable where that variable is decremented whenever the loop is executed so compile the program by built all project files no errors are generated no syntax errors are there then go to the Synapro first search the device now the search is ok now you can load the hexa file in the samples folder led2 1 led2 save and program the flash now if you see the led the flickering rate is changing from high intensity now see it's very bright initially it was flickering so that means that loop is 0 to 100 is continuously changing the delay is changing if I press the reset button of the controller you will notice that initially the delay is very high and slowly it will be decrementing which is like a sweep signal so I will press the reset now you can see the program is started executing again slowly the J value will be decremented and it will reach to the zero so now there is no difference between on time and off time so this is just to practice a normal C programs in embedded C. 
embedded systems. The third example is about how to use arrays in the programs. So that is example number. So LED3 example, open the project file. So in this program, DDR D.7, single bit, we want to make it as output. But now, instead of writing the value 0 or 1, we are passing a pointer where we have defined a array, a single dimension array of index value 4. So, 4 bits we have stored 1, 0, 1, 0. So, we are reading that value from the memory and we are writing to the port D.7 with a delay. So all four elements we are reading and will output. So the last value is off. So on, off, on, off. So this example will demonstrate how to define array and how to use the array which is a binary values in this example. Compile the program. select the binary value which is third example LED3 now if you see the board the program will execute four times and the LED will be off if I will reset you will notice the program again it will be executed 1 0 1 0 and stop. So that means it is reading the array and displaying on the LED the contents of the array. The next example is write a program to switch on or to switch off the LEDs which are connected on port C. 8 LEDs are connected on port C switch on and switch off. After making them switch on and switch off, switch on one LED at a time and move that bit position from left to right and right to left. So you can write by using previous methods or you can use some new functions or operators like as you can see in the example example number LED 4 in the if you open this example where in the design of this board port C is connected where all port C is connected on this 5 by 2 connector. There is a VCC pin and there is a ground pin. So you can connect 8 LEDs to the board while connecting these 8 LEDs to the board make sure there is a red wire or there is a notch. This notch should go exactly outside the PCB where the notch is printed. Now go write a program. So in the program first entire port C will have to make it as output port. Then as can be seen in the program where we are using for loop two for loops where j is the variable and j we are repeating for seven times and in the loop 
we have diff we are outputting the value i to the port c and we are using left shift operator so that i will be left shifted by one bit whatever is the contents of i will be left shifted by one bit so this is like a assembly language rotate right instruction so initially i is ff and then you are rotating right by one bit similarly if you second loop eight, seven times zero to seven eight times you want to execute only difference is i value is rotated by right by one bit so if you load this program LED4 example you will notice the bit one bit at a time it will rotate from left to right and right to left so this is how you can use logical operators and conditional statements in the program the way you use in normal c so this completes by using led as a interface where we are demonstrated for examples in that we have used 8 bit data we have used single bit data we have used array and we have used the logical operators and conditional statements in the program so far we have done programming examples where the port is initialized as a output port so the next example is let us see how to make the port as a input port where we will give some signal to the port pin where microcontroller will read that data so for that data direction register has to be zero whichever is the pin you want to make it input and then the data you can read it by using pin register so in the design you can see for example port to d pd2 is available on the connector the name of the connector is int0 then there is another pin called pd3 on int1 pin so one side of that pin is vcc other side of that connector is ground so which are placed on your pcb outer side of the board as you can see int0 and int1 so int0 is nothing but pd2 so let us write a program to read the pin just for testing purpose we will short this pin this pin and this pin so that it will get zero and in the second example we will short this pin and this pin you will get 5 volts so the program should read this pin and the same data whatever you are reading through pd2 output the data on pd7 so that whenever you give zero through the switch then led will be off and whenever you give the one through the switch that is shorting these two pins that led on pd7 should be on so the example is in your samples where fourth example key 1 so in this example we have made data direction register as a 80 so that d7 bit is output and all other bits are inputs then in the while loop mm, infinite loop while one where we are reading pin d.2 and assigning that value to pin port d.7 now see the difference whenever you are reading the port we are saying pin that means port in and whenever you are writing the data we are writing port 
so these are the two different registers to read we use pin to write we use port okay so as it is this value we are transferring on other bit of the port so compile load the hexa values into the flash memory now as you can see the int 0 and int 1 so on int 0 take the 2 pin jump jumper and close the last two pins you will notice the LED which is port D.7 will be off whenever I remove the jumper now that LED is on so when you are giving 0 that LED will be off when you are giving 1 the LED will be on ok so this demonstrate where the microcontroller pins are reading the data so this reading the data is a binary values that is microcontroller port pins can read either 0 volts or 5 volts not the intermediate values a number of sensors can be interfaced for this like uh, sensors like switches sensors like the uh, level measurement sensors touch sensors or like door closing door opening such type of sensors any sensor which can give the output as a binary value not a analog output it should give digital output so then the microcontroller port pins can read the data in the next example let us use both the pins PD2 as well as PD3 and if this PD2 is closed switch on the LED with a slow speed and switch off the LED and if the PD3 is closed switch on or switch off the LED with a high speed so that it can demonstrate that two pins of the microcontroller it is reading now you you need to verify which input is closed so that the corresponding function will be called so you need to use a conditional statements in the program so open the fifth example key 2 in this example the data direction register is still 80 because D.7 is LED is connected all other pins where PD2 PD3 we want to make it input where the switches are connected now in the while loop we are using this conditional statement if pin d.2 equal to equal to 1 then we want to execute this function where the delay on delay and off delay is 100 millisecond if the d.3 the other input is equal to equal to 1 then we want to switch on or switch off the LED with a on time off time thousand milliseconds that is one second so the difference is if you say single equal that means this value is assigned to the left hand side label if you use equal to equal to that means actually we are it is a compare statement not we are modifying the left hand side value like a normal C program okay after compiling let's load the program fifth example key 2 
so as you can see there let me close the inputs of the switches now if i open i, I press reset if i press if i release if i give one input now uh, this is blinking very fast which is because of the 100 milliseconds uh, delay now i will close this so that this function won't be executed now i will open this now in the next example let us see how to interface text lcd to avr microcontroller lcd is a 16 bin connector where out of 16 pins pin number 1 is ground two is vcc third is contrast adjustment connected to ground by using 1 kilo ohms resistor pin number 4 is control signal that is rs register select pin number 5 is again control signals that is read oblique write bar and pin number 6 is enable which is connected to the microcontroller port b pb0 pb1 pb2 the data bus 8 bit data bus supposed to be connected from pin number 70 7 to 14 but we have connected only upper portion of the data bus that is d4 d5 d6 d7 connected to pb4 pb5 pb6 and pb7 the last two pins that is 15 is again vcc 16 is ground for the backlit led so the text lcd which we have connected to the port b occupies total seven lines pb0 pb1 pb2 pb3 is not used in code vision compiler there are inbuilt libraries are there for the lcd so the initialization of the lcd can be easily done by using code wizard when you use the code wizard toolbox it will ask whether the lcd is connected on port a port b port c or port d because you can connect anywhere wherever you want any port or combination of the ports also you can connect it so we have chosen atmega 32 as a controller where we are going to interface and operating speed is 8 megahertz now if you see the uh, option of using lcd where alpha numeric lcd can be interfaced if you enable this then as you can see in 4 bit form right you can interface various types of L lcd so how many characters are there in one line 8 12 16 so number of characters per line we want to choose 16 now you can see the control signals where they are connected in our case we have connected on port b and then the bit is pb0 and read oblique write bar we have connected on pb1 enable we have connected on pb2 and the data bus d4 is again port b but pb bit is pb4 pb5 pb6 and pb7 so this completes the hardware initialization of the lcd now if you can go to program and generate save exit so you will notice the template for this is automatically created so in cvavr folder i will say lcd is my name of the program and three times you will have to give the same name
Okay, so if you see the, since we have used LCD as a peripheral, so the header file for LCD is included. And then now L at least the LCD initialization is taken care where the required function is included in the program. Then you can write a, some text message to display it on the LCD. So how to display various text or characters on the LCD? If you see the help in help topics, where if you see the library functions and there the functions for LCD is given. So if you go through the functions of LCD, like you can see the LCD initialization and then you can see how to move the cursor on the LCD so that it will start displaying from there, how to display the string on the LCD, how to display the character on the LCD. So these are various functions one can use so that you need not worry about hardware initialization of the LCD where code vision uh, assumes that with the help of this library and the functions the hardware initialization is taken care okay so if I will just demonstrate one example you can see the example of this program So in sample programs, that is sixth example LCD. So the same signal, let us see on a digital storage oscilloscope. Now, as we have seen, we have kept the timer clock at 8,000 kilohertz, that is eight megahertz. So 1 upon 8 megahertz is 0.125 is the microseconds. So 0.125 microseconds is 1 T state multiplied by the timer 0, Tc and T0 starting from 0, 0. And uh, in the loop we kept 6 is the initial count. So 256 minus 6 is 250. So 250 into 0 0.125 microseconds is the total delay so since the count number of overflows we kept is one so if you load this program now if you see on digital storage oscilloscope you will see the delta t that is this rate of repetition of the cycle is happening at every 33 microseconds approximately so if I increase or decrease this count then the delta T will change say for example if I make it 2 right now the frequency is 14.92 kilohertz so this now I made it double the number of overflows are double. So if I compile this program and load it into the flash memory, now if you observe on the digital storage oscilloscope, my frequency is half, 7.44. And if you, cha if you adjust the cursor position to measure the delta T, now the delta T is 66 microseconds is increased because we have counting the number of power flows two times. So, so that is how we can measure the width of the pulse or we can generate the delay as per the user requirement. So, so, so three important things. One is the clock applied to the timer second is the initial count which we are loading third is the number of overflows you are counting 
will leads to the total delay at the output of the port so while connecting you can connect the dso probe to the output of the either led or on the port pin so the same signal let us see on a digital storage oscilloscope now as we have seen we have kept the timer clock at 8000 kilohertz that is 8 megahertz so 1 upon 8 megahertz is 0.125 is the microseconds so 0.125 microseconds is 1t state multiplied by the timer 0 tc and t0 starting from 0 0 and in the loop we kept 6 is the initial count so 256 minus 6 is 250 so 250 into 0.125 microseconds is the total delay so since the count number of overflows we kept is 1 so if you load this program now if you see on digital storage oscilloscope you will see the delta t that is this rate of repetition of the cycle is happening at every 33 microseconds approximately so if i increase or decrease this count then the delta t will change say for example if i make it 2 right now the frequency is 14.92 kilohertz so this now i made it double the number of overflows are double so if i compile this program and load it into the flash memory now if you observe on the digital storage oscilloscope my frequency is half 7.44 and if you che if you adjust the cursor position to measure the delta t now the delta t is 66 microseconds is increased because we have counting the number of overflows two times so, so that is how we can measure the width of the pulse or we can generate the delay as per the user requirement so 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 three important things one is the clock applied to the timer second is the initial count which we are loading third is the number of overflows you are counting will leads to the total delay at the output of the port so while connecting you can connect the dso probe to the output of the either led or on the port pin in this exercise let us see how to interface the 4 by 1 keyboard as you can see in the figure where four keys which are interfaced where the connector is a five pin connector out of that one of the pin is common as you can see there is a common pin so whenever you press this button this common pin is connected to the corresponding wire of this ribbon cable so the common pin will be shorted to the corresponding switch then you can recognize whether the switch is pressed or not so that means you need to write a program where whenever that particular pin is active high or active low that pins that switch is pressed in our case we are connecting this common pin to the ground pin
of the this microcontroller board where the common pin is connected to the ground pin and remaining four pins are connected to port A PA0, PA1, PA2 and PA3 that is this connector is available on the board over here so there is a ground pin so common wire should go to this ground pin and then you have PA0, PA1, PA2 and PA3 so whenever a switch is pressed then that particular switch is connected to ground pin means you will get zero rest of the time they may be high so whenever a zero is detected that means that particular switch is pressed write a program to read the key press and the display on LCD saying that a specific key is pressed so when you write the program the program first since you have used port A as a input port and initially you want all the pins to be high so port A output 0F and entire port A you want to be input port so DDRA is 00. zero. Then since we want to display the key press on LCD initialize the LCD and then in the while loop read the pin register if pin A.1 is pressed then you can say 4 is pressed if pin A.2 is pressed then you can say 1 is pressed if pin A.3 is pressed you can say 2 is pressed so by using if and while conditions you can display which switch is pressed since this is a straight direct interface where every switch of the port is connected to the corresponding pins of PA0, PA1, PA2 and PA3 so in the program directly you can use the if conditional statement to verify whether that particular pin has become 0 or not if it is 0 then you can accordingly take corresponding action so if you load this program after compiling this is an example 18 4 by 1 keypad is a hexa file so after loading into the flash memory of the controller so if you press a key As you can see, whenever a switch is pressed, the corresponding key is displayed on the LCD. So this is how one can interface a standard keyboard which is used. The next example is interface a 8-bit digital to analog converter to AVR microcontroller this 8-bit DAC from analog devices is a 16 pin IC pin number 1 to 8 is data bus DB0 to DB7 and pin number 16 is equivalent analog output voltage so to interface to the microcontroller any one of the port you can connect it to DB0 to DB7 and then connect CS bar CE bar to ground and VCC you can give 5 volts and V out sense select V out connected together where analog output voltage is there and correct the ground signal so if you give the digital data of 8 bit anywhere from 0 0 to FF it will generate the equivalent analog voltage on pin number 16. 
so in our case port c is free which is available on 5 by 2 box type of connector where even pins are on one side odd pins are on other side pin number 9 is vcc and pin number 10 is ground so you can connect the all eight data lines to the d2a converter so this dac voltage output is available here you can connect the ground to the cro probe and the output voltage to the cro probe input while connecting this ribbon make sure the red wire is pin number one the notch is outside the pcb where pin number one should match otherwise you may apply the reverse voltage to the dac and dac may get it damaged so in the program the first task of the program is make a square wave by using digital to analog converter with a 50 percent duty cycle and 10 microseconds is the on time and 10 microseconds is the off time so the program is make port c as output port so in ddrc write ff then to convert analog to digital form sorry digital to analog form so for high state write ff then call delay of 10 microseconds then to make it low state write 00, zero to the data bus of dac then call delay so if you load this program which is example number 20 dac square wave then you will notice on the oscilloscope the on time is 10 microseconds 10.8 so there is a slight error and off time is 10 microseconds is the delay which we have generated and which is a analog waveform to prove that this dac is a really generating analog equivalent of the digital voltage let us generate a waveform which is sawtooth waveform so the example is example number 21 which is a sawtooth waveform in this program on port c we have made it our output port but when we write the data to the port c instead of a constant value we have defined a variable where that count is initially zero zero and with a delay of one microsecond we are incrementing the count by one one so the value will start from zero zero will reach up to ff and after ff again it will fall back to zero zero so you should shed get a sawtooth waveform where every step size is of one microsecond so if you load this program example 21 So if you adjust your time scale, you will notice the sawtooth waveform on the CRO. So how to generate a triangular waveform? The difference in triangular waveform is it's starting from 0, 0 will reach to the maximum value and again it should come back to the zero position by decrementing the peak value so you can you need to write two loops one loop will take you from zero zero will reach up to the maximum amplitude other loop will decrement so minus in one case you are adding the step in other case you are subtracting the step so that it will and that will give you both these slopes one is the rising slope other is the falling slope so initially we have initialized account as a zero zero made port c as output then you want to verify whether you have reached 15 as a decimal number or not so for that you have started with the offset value and then 
you are keep on adding that amplitude and then that step size is 0.1 so after that again you are subtracting till you reach to the zero value and since it the both the while loops are in a infinite loop will continuously get a sawtooth uh, uh, triangular waveform so example number 22 If you adjust the time scale, it should give you the triangular waveform where the value is starting from zero zero, reach to the maximum value, and then again come back to the zero zero position. So this is how one can generate the various waveforms. Let us see how to generate a sine wave. Whereas in sine wave the two important things one is the amplitude second is the frequency the amplitude which is uh, is a has to be implemented by some mathematical series either taylor series or some numerical integration method like uh, euler's method in since the code division has a math library so instead of writing any numerical method or uh, integration techniques we are using that sine function in the program and with some offset value for positive half cycle and negative half cycle we have written the two loops so one will give you positive half other will give you negative half of the waveform because this d to a converter is unipolar which is having only positive reference there is no negative reference so obviously there is no negative peak everything you have to adjust between zero that is ground and the plus vcc reference so that means half of the voltage for example in case of a 5 volts 2.5 volts is your zero state and about 2.5 to 5 volts you will have to consider positive peak and 2.5 to zero volts you will have to consider as a negative peak or else in hexa numbers 00 to 7f you will have to consider as a negative portion 80 to ff you will have to consider as a positive portion because this is a unipolar dsc not bipolar dsc so if this since we are using the sine function and we are constructing positive half and negative half so if you load this program where example number 23 so you will notice the sine wave and the steps are so clearly visible the discrete steps you can see the step between one sample to the other sample with this it decide by the resolution of the dsc as the resolution is more then step size will be less so you will be more closer to the original waveform so resolution and the sampling time will decide the accuracy of the waveform so these are the two important things the time between one step to other step is the delta t that is a sample and the resolution will give you the size of the step say for example if you have 8 bit dsc that means 2 raised to 8 so so 1 upon 2 raised to 8 is your step size so reference voltage divided by 
to raise to 8 will give you 1 LSP. But instead of that reference voltage divided by if I go for 10 bit DAC, then 2 raised to 10, that is 1024. So that will give you even a smaller step because you have 00 to 1023 step, uh, steps for a voltage of 0 to 5 volts. So that is how increasing the resolution will reduce the size of this step so that even you can represent a minute slope of the signal. So far we have seen how to construct the waveforms by using some equations. But for example, a biomedical signals like ECG signal, where you cannot represent a mathematical function like sine or cosine, because that waveform consists of lot of frequency components. So, but however, it is a repetitive signal. So, how to generate such type of waveforms? So the next example is example number 25. So in this example, it is not one waveform. It is as you can see P waveform, Q waveform and R waveform. So every waveform has different magnitude, different frequency component. So you will have to construct a waveform by using different parts of the waveform. So every part has a different either expression or a database you can you need to implement. So these are the some sort of a mini projects. So if you can load the waveform or you can also construct the waveform by using database where the entire waveform is stored in the memory and then you can output that signal that value to the D to A converter. So if you adjust your you can see the waveform how nicely the ECG signal is being generated. So part by part where you can construct the waveform. The next example is a mini project. Generate a sine wave and generate a triangular waveform where sine wave frequency is 50 hertz triangular waveform frequency is 1 kilohertz then compare sine waveform with the triangular waveform where the triangular waveform peak is greater than the sine waveform. Then after comparison, if the triangular waveform amplitude is greater than sine waveform, the output should be high. If the triangular waveform amplitude is less than the sine waveform amplitude, output should be low. So this state of the comparator output put it on any one of the pin of the microcontroller. This is called sine triangle modulation where most of the power electronics inverters converters used to drive the IGBTs or the MOSFETs. So where we give the sign as a reference voltage and we compare the triangular waveform that is called modulation. So triangular waveform is a carrier frequency and the sine waveform is the original signal. So if you modulate that modulating signal with the carrier frequency then the fundamental will be 50 hertz 
but then represented by a modulated signal pwm signal if you filter that waveform then again a sine waveform if you integrate that signal by using some low pass filter you will get a sine waveform so this is how in principle all the inverters works so in this if you can as you can see the program structure initially we have used port b d0 bit as a output port because there we want to generate the sine triangular modulation output in the main program first we are so the program flow is as follows the first part is generation of the sine waveform in this project we have used numerical integration method we have not used sine function where by using euler's method where uh, is like a x of n plus 1 is equal to x of n plus omega delta t into y of n y of n plus 1 is equal to y of n minus omega delta t into x of n so this is how a numerical technique euler's method is used to generate the sine wave where fs is the frequency term dt is the integration time step the c is the initial value uh, is the sample net. similarly to generate as we have seen in the previous example to generate the sine waveform a triangular waveform the upper slope and the lower slope with a count we are comparing and whether the count has reached to the maximum value or not and either we are adding to increment or we are subtracting to decrement that so then it is a comparator as we can see th we are comparing uh, m of c value with x of c value where x of c is your triangular waveform m of c is your sine waveform so you are comparing m of c value with uh, if m of c is greater than x of c then you are making port bit as 0 1 if it is less than that you are making port bit as a 0 0 value so this is what we called as a sine triangle modulation or comparing this value so if you load this program which is this project is example number 24 sine triangle modulation sine triangle program you will notice that as you can see the output is continuously changing the width of the pulse is continuously oscillating so it that is because your sine wave is compared with the triangular waveform obviously so the width of the pulse is changing based on the slope of the sine waveform this is what is exactly is connected to the inverter inputs or IJBT inputs of the power electronic inverters or converters the next example is interfacing the serial port of the microcontroller to the serial port of the personal computer microcontroller has a serial port different types of serial ports serial peripheral interface serial communication interface i square c bus so in this example we will see how to interface serial communication interface that is UART universal asynchronous receiver transmitter this also has a synchronous operation otherwise usually asynchronous communication is only txt rxt where without clock with full duplex operation where transmitting and receiving takes place in asynchronous communication the rate of communication is decided by the baud rate generator so by programming this clock generator the conversion from parallel to serial and serial to parallel is decided by this board rate generator so since cpu is operating with master clock let us say 8 megahertz then you need to derive 
the rate of communication by using the master oscillator. So you can choose the dividing factor in such a way that the transmitting and receiving data speed is decided by this baud rate generator. There are some standard baud rates are there like 1200, 2400, 4800, 9600 and so on. So these are the figures one has to use while transmitting and receiving the data. So though it is a asynchronous communication that means there is no clock but still we can synchronize by using a standard baud rate where transmitter and receiver will follow the same speed plus it also has a communication protocol. So as you can see th from the formula where baud rate is equal to CPU speed oscillator divided by 16 into UBRR plus 1. So UBRR is the desired um, baud rate you want. So this value you have to feed it in a register called UBRRH and UBRRL. Anywhere the value is from 0 to 4095. So F oscillator is your CPU speed. In our case it is a 8 megahertz where the crystal we have interfaced. So in asynchronous communication as can be seen in the figure where whenever you want to transmit the data, the data has to be loaded in a register called UDR register. So this register uh, which is a parallel in so that means you can write the data in parallelly into this register then the data will be converted into serial form from parallel to serial form by using the baud rate which act as a clock source. Then the data is added with the uh, start bit, stop bit, parity bit and so on which is called as a frame. So are we also called as a byte oriented protocol because every byte is adding some parity bit, start bit and stop bit which is how it synchronizes with the receiver. So the data is converted into serial form and it's available on TXT pin. Similarly while receiving the data, the data which is receiving serial form it has to separate out the parity bit, start bit and stop bit and the data will be assembled after recovering in a receiver register and then it will be converted serial to parallel form and will be loaded in UDR register so that it is available on the data bus. So th this is how a in short a parallel in serial out and serial in parallel out operation takes place and for this operation the rate of communication is decided by this baud rate generator. The various uh, control registers for doing this operation they are uh, we need to discuss. So when we transmit the data or receive the data look at the frame the initially it is in the ideal state the either a transmitter data pin ideal statement active high state then there will be a start bit which is one bit as you can see which goes from high state to low state that indicates that the start of the frame a frame consists of one start bit and then data data is again a optional it can be four five bit it can be six bit seven bit eight bit nine bit so it is a size of the data is programmable then at the end of the data there is a parity bit again so as you can see when you are specifying these in a square brackets that means it is a optional. So parity bit is a optional again and then the uh, stop bit makes the frame from low to high state. So uh, before the next frame starts there is a guaranteed that the data will go from low to high which is a stop bit. So this frame information has to be same while transmitting and receiving. So that is how the start of the frame, the end of the frame will be recognized by the receiver. So about the 
uh, control registers of the serial communication. One is about the data register UDR. As you can see, it is a uh, while transmitting, it is a write register. While receiving, it is a read register. So this 8-bit register holds the data while transmitting. You need to write it into UDR register, and which is a receiver buffer, transmitter buffer. And while receiving, the UDR will hold the data, which act as a receiver buffer. Similarly, the control and status registers of the serial communication. Say, for example, the eighth bit will indicate the receive complete. So that means whenever the data is assembled, whenever the data is there in UDR register, it says that receiver is completed. Similarly, transmitting complete. That means whenever you write the data and when it is converted from parallel to serial form, then it says that transmit is completed. Or the D fifth bit, which is a data register empty. That means whenever the data is transmitted and the if the buffer is empty, then it says the data register is empty. So these are all the status bits. Similarly, framing error. Whenever the receiver data is not correctly received, if there is a some bits are lost, then framing error will be generated. So like that, so this, this also act as a control and status register. And similarly, the interrupts. So while receiving and transmit, if you want to enable or disable the interrupts for transmitter and receiver, you can enable. And if you want full duplex, then you enable the receiver also, enable the transmitter. If you want to have only simplex, where you want to transmit only, then you enable transmitter. If you want only receive, then you receiver enable. But this has to be enabled whenever you want to communicate. Whenever you want to transmit ninth bit, then as you can see, the D0 act as a transmit bit or D1 bit act as a receive bit. So that uh, since your uh, data register is 8 bit, ninth bit will be represented on USRB register D0 and D1 bits. So and about the baud rate register. Since the uh, rate of communication is decided by the uh, uh, serial communication, it's not the master clock. So you have to divide the master clock by some constant so that the baud rate, that is the rate of communication, number of bits per second will be decided. So there is a register called UBRR register. This register has to be loaded with the a numerical value which act as a dividing factor. So as can be seen from the lookup table, say for example, if your operating speed of the microcontroller is one megahertz, then if you want a baud rate to be generated, let us say 9,600 bits per second, then the, as you can see, there is a possibility of error, minus seven point percent error, and you have to load the UBR register with a value called 12. So that means there is a, first you should know that there is an error of 7%, which is very substantial error. Similarly, if you look at some other crystal, like say for example, 3.6864 megahertz is the operating speed of the CPU. And if you want a baud rate of 9600, then the error is 0%. And an UBR register, you will have to load value 47, so that it will communicate with 9600 bits per second. So this 47 is calculated from the formula which is mentioned above. So similarly, if you use 8 megahertz as a crystal in our case, and 9600 bits per second is the transmitting rate, then the error will be 0.2% and UBRR you have to load with a value called 51. Or in hexa value it is 33. So what you can see is that whenever the crystal is a round figure, then there is a some error is there. If the crystal is uh, like 11.05 and crystal cut frequency, then the error is zero. So what does it indicate that why the error in a crystals where you round the number, then the error will be more, or if you very selective about the operating clock, then the error is zero percent. So all these things is because whenever you choose a crystal, 
whatever is the baud rate you are choosing so whenever it is dividing the remainder should be zero so in case of 11.059 if you want the baud rate of this then the error will be zero because remainder is zero however if you have a 8 megahertz and if you use the above formula and if you try to derive these baud rates then there is a remainder and in our programs we don't take the remainders we neglect the remainder and we take only quotient because of that then there is a always a error and if the error should not be more than 1% then it is acceptable so anything below 0% is okay is it uh, because it's it is not differing by one bit so this is what someone has to take care while using the serial communication the transmitter frequency receiver frequency should be same and the frame that is the start bit stop bits and parity bit whatever is selected on the transmitter it should be same as receiver and in serial communication we are using asynchronous communication there is no common clock and then when you are connecting the microcontroller to the computer you have to take care of that rs232 standards that is you have to level shift 0 to 5 volts to plus 12 and minus 12 volts which was discussed in the earlier design examples say for example on the pcb we have the uh, txt and rxt pins from the microcontroller but then these these txt rxt pins which are 0 to 5 volts that is pd0 and pd1 so we are using a ic called max232 ic so that this pd0 and pd1 is converted into rs232 form that is plus 12 and minus 12 by using ds4 capacitors 10 microfarad capacitors and carefully if you see the capacitor polarity also positive and negative is connected very specifically so that it will build up plus 12 volts and minus 12 volts the operating voltage of this ic is 5 volts but it will generate plus 12 and minus 12 volts so those rs232 volts are available on this com port where you can see in the uh, placement of the components so you will find here so you connect these three pins to the computer serial port by using nine pin d type connector though we are using only three wires that is in in these three wires what we are using is only the pin number 14 pin number 13 and ground that means transmitted data received data and ground so only these three wires we are using to connect to the computer serial port to the nine pin d type female connector let us see how to write a program in code vision we have a code wizard in in code wizard apart from other peripherals what you have seen in the earlier examples so here we have another peripheral called uart so when you choose the uart you have as you can see in the top usart you you have to enable receiver if you want full duplex and transmitter now it is asking what do you, do you want to use interrupt mechanism or a pooling mechanism if you don't use interrupt mechanism then you will have to call the functions while transmitting as well as receiving now you have to choose the baud rate now you have a standard baud rates i said earlier that uh, like 1200 2400 9600 and so on and then when you choose the baud rate it also indicates what is the percentage of error you are going to have then the uh, protocol so as you can see what is the standard protocol you want to follow that is nothing but frame like 8 bit data one stop bit no parity bit and mode of communication you want asynchronous communication or synchronous communication because computers com port serial port is a asynchronous communication okay so then if you go to program generate and save then it will generate that